Good morning from Fresh Start. What a blessing it is to be back in God's Word. Uh, we appreciate each and every one able to watch this morning and be with us in service. We'll be in Revelations chapter 12 this morning, continuing on in our Revelations Bible study, uh, this family Bible time. And I, I thank God that uh, many take time out of their day, regardless if it's on the hour or if it's a pre-recorded, uh, that they take time out and they study God's Word. It's so important uh, that we gain wisdom in this day. And while I'm on that, I'm going to go to uh, Zechariah chapter 10. I'm going to read to you one verse here in, ch in uh, chapter 10, verse 1. Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone grass in the field. This rain that is spoken of here in Zechariah, it's talking about the wisdom that is needed in this day. We need wisdom to understand uh, uh, God's word. And without that wisdom, well, we are just uh, following along in traditions of man. <clears throat> and also in James 1 and 5, which is the same concept, it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God that giveth to all man liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. So we need wisdom uh, in studying the word of God. We need God's understanding and direction to be able to understand more of God's word. And um, so often there's, things that we'll bring out through the Word of God. And uh, there will be times when we go back over this same chapter and uh, things will be added and uh, maybe not used the same uh, concepts as we did before. But uh, God's Word is wonderful that way. It can give you understanding uh, even in the times when uh, it seems bleak. Uh, but God wants you to be prepared. And that's the whole concept, to be prepared. So here we are in Revelations chapter number 12, and before we get started, uh, we'll ask Father for his blessings. Precious Father, we come to you thanking you for another blessed day. We ask, Father, for your blessings upon the reading of thy word. We ask, Father, that you allow your word to land on fertile ground this morning. Open eyes and open ears to your word, and Father, we'll give you the praise and give you the glory for all things. In the precious name of Christ, I pray, amen. Revelations chapter 1, and it reads, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Now, what needs to be explained is, is that in Revelations chapter number 12, we begin in the first earth age. And it will go through the time of when Satan was uh, king of Tyre, uh, Ezekiel 28. And uh, we will go through at that point, and then we'll come into this flesh age, uh, when the birth of Christ, and uh, then we go on through, and uh, we see. But what I'm trying to get at is, is that do not be confused at these time frames, and we'll explain these as we go. Chapter 12 and verse 1, it speaks here of the woman. Now, this woman that it's speaking of here, this is Mother Israel. <clears throat> and it goes on to say, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars, and these would be uh, the tribes of Jacob. And uh, these uh, that are spoken of here are a blessing. These are a blessing to this world and to God's word. Uh, for we know that's the bloodline that Christ came through. And uh, we see here that there is so much emphasis put on this mother Israel. But again, like, un like the woman that is mentioned in Revelations chapter 17, this woman has a different concept than that of Revelation 17. Revelation 17 will 
get into that pretty soon and you'll see exactly what her motivation is and uh, what she exalts herself to be. Verse number two, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. This uh, being with child, this is uh, the time of a new age uh, that was coming. And uh, that's what was coming at the time when God put man on this earth uh, in the flesh. Verse three, and there appeared another wonder in heaven. Again, these things are taking place in heaven. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns uh, upon his head. This seven crowns is definitely depict that of the first earth age, because if you'll read in Revelations 13 and 1, it speaks here, he says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, uh, and upon his horn ten crowns, and upon his heads uh, the name of blasphemy. So we see here in this earth age, during the time of the Antichrist, he will have ten agencies that will uh, perform his work for him. But only in the first earth age he had seven. So, but what we want to do this morning, we want to be sure that you understand uh, the names that are given uh, that to uh, Lucifer or uh, the dragon or Satan, whichever one it is speaking about, whichever uh, time frame of subject that is given. So turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 28. And I'll start reading around verse number one. Ezekiel 28 and verse one, and it reads, The word of the Lord came un unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man and not God. Though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. And that's exactly what he became. He became likened unto a man because he is sentenced to death. Now had he not ever uh, committed the sin that he did, he would not have been depicted as man. But he is depicted as man because he will die. Three, behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. Four, with thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. And that's exactly how he got it. And that was talking about the seven uh, crowns that was given unto him. Five, by thy great wisdom and by thy traffic. You see that? The trafficking was what caused him to gain so much in the first earth age. Hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Six. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their sword against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall devile, defile thy brightness. And that's exactly what the election will do in this day. In this day when the Antichrist comes, read it again, verse 7. Behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee. These strangers are those that will have nothing to do with Lucifer have nothing to do with the Antichrist. He said, the terrible. This word terrible in your Strong's, it's uh, in the Hebrew 6184, and it means powerful is what we are. Powerful by the power of God, because we stand on the truth. 
the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom. He will try every trick in the book to draw away God's election, draw them away from the truth. In other words, draw them to his, his uh, camp, for say. And they shall devile, defile thy brightness. Verse 8. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Those that are in the midst of the nations, how they die, they die a spiritual death. That's exactly how he's going to go down. Verse 9. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? <laughs> I don't think so. When he's in that position, he's going to be bound up and chained up, and he's not going to have any right to say that he is God. But thou shalt be a man and no God in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Ten, thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers. For I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. So we cover here in Revelations 12 and verse 3, we cover what we are seeing in Ezekiel 28, this dragon. This is who... Uh, the dragon is. This is uh, the prince of Tyra. Verse number four. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to deliver her child or to devour her child as soon as it was born. This tail that he used is his wisdom and his powerful way of converting people to his side. He is very cunning and very wise. Uh, Lucifer, the dragon, Satan, he knows God's word and he knows exactly how it's going to transpire. Now, if he can change a person's mind before the transaction of this work that he's going to do, if he can change their mind to believe that he is Christ and believe that he is correct, then he's got that person. He's got that person on his side. So it says here again in verse 4, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and it did. One third of God's children were deceived by Lucifer and did cast them to the earth. That's exactly what's happened to all of God's children. It, the Bible tells us that we are all appointed to come through this dispensation of time, through the flesh age, uh, one time. Uh, no, there's no such thing as a reincarnation. There's no such thing as uh, someone coming back more than once, regardless what people may say, and regardless what uh, science may try to teach, it's not what God's word teaches. So he said here that his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And these third, it's been said that uh, there is a lot of evil that is in our earth today and uh, a lot of uh, things that uh, are coming out and uh, people accepting and things that uh, 40 years ago would have never been spoken about. But today they use these words loosely and they uh, do whatever it is that makes them feel good. And uh, I said that to say this, that this third part of the stars of heaven, uh, there is a vast majority of them that are here on earth today. Uh, the first will be last and the last will be first. And we see that there's need for that because these have to come through the earth age. These have to be tested. And why are we here? We are here to prove whom it is that we love. Did you follow Lucifer in the first earth age or did you follow Father? And I'm under the impression that you followed 
Father, because you are studying along the lines that you need uh, to understand what's going to transpire in these di uh, future days. And uh, we don't realize all of the people that are around us half the time and uh, what type of people they are, but it doesn't take you long to figure out what a motivation of a person is. And uh, the Bible teaches us that we are not to judge. Uh, we do not judge uh, what a person uh, does, or uh, for if we did, that would make us judges. But the scriptures do teach us that we can be a fruit inspector. Or the Bible says that you'll know a tree by the fruit that it bears. And if it bears bad fruit, then it is not a good tree. Okay, verse 4 again, and he said, And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. This would be the Christ child. This is exactly how it was uh, placed about. And uh, You'll read in the Gospels there about uh, uh, Matthew, about verse uh, uh, chapter number 2 or 3, I believe it is, is that where it talks about when Christ came, that the angel of the Lord was there when the child was delivered. You say, well, what does that have to do with it? Well, the angel of the Lord is Father's angel. And the glory of God was shown all around, meaning that Father was there at the moment that that child was delivered. And there also was a host of angels that were there when Christ was delivered, meaning that there was protection to where Satan could not take him at that time. So we see here in verse 4 that Satan desired to take Christ. He wanted to do away with him. He wanted to uh, slay him. And he used Herod and uh, used many others to try to take him. But Father had other plans. Amen. Verse 5. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God uh, and to his throne. And this... Uh, Really, verse 5 just gives you all of what Christ done. He came in as a child, and uh, when he comes back in his second advent, he will rule all nations with a rod of iron. Does that mean that Satan is going to be, or excuse me, that Christ is going to be uh, angry and evil and uh, punishing? No, it just means that his word and his direction will stand. It will no longer be diverted or smoothed over or would there be anybody that would question. When he decrees something, that's how it will be. Why is that? Because he will be king of kings and lord of lords. Verse number six. And the woman fled, this is Mother Israel, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. This woman, this being Mother Israel, this is depicted as you and I in this latter day. And when the tribulation comes, this uh, 1,203 score days. Uh, we understand that to be three and a half years, and we know that the time has been changed uh, in Mark 13 and 20. Uh, it's been shortened uh, for the elect's sake. Uh, but I wanted to say in Jeremiah, turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 30, Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse number 10. Verse number 10 reads, Therefore, 
Fear thou not, O my servant Jacob. Now when he speaks of Jacob, he's speaking of all the 12 tribes, the 13 tribes for instance, but the all of the tribes. <laughs> Saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of thy captivity. And Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. This is a promise from God, that during this time, God will show a protection. How far off? From afar off, he doesn't have to be right beside one. Verse 11, <coughs> excuse me. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. Though I make a full end of all nations, uh, whether I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee. But I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. This is very important to recognize here. He said, I will correct thee in measure. It's important that we notice that only a father would correct his own child. God loves you and he desires that you be corrected. Now, I know it's not fashionable to be corrected, I know a lot of people that doesn't like to be corrected. But there's times in our life when we need to be corrected. And thanks be unto God, he's going to do that. He's going to make it to where we are corrected. To where we do see things the right way. But we came there to prove that God has a hand of protection on his children. So again, back in Revelation chapter 12 and verse number 6, And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God. A place prepared. That they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. Verse number 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. At this very time is when Revelation chapter 8 and verse 1 comes to play. If we read Revelations 8 and 1, it says, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. This half an hour is half the time of what is mentioned in Revelations 3 and 10. Let me go over the 3 and 10 to confirm what I'm trying to say here. 3 and 10 reads, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. So meaning that there will be a full hour of temptation is what is called this full time of the temptation when Lucifer will be here and uh, his work will be done. What it's saying here is that, uh, that during this full time, uh, you will be protected and you will be taken care of. Now, as we read here uh, in Revelations 8 and 1, it says, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for the space of a half an hour. So when Satan is booted out of heaven here in Revelations 12 and 7, when he is booted out, him and his horde of angels, uh, there will be silence in heaven at that time for the space of a half an hour. Verse 8. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. This is coming very soon. This is coming sooner than what people expect. Well, the thing about it is, is that uh, many will not be prepared. Many will not be prepared for the coming of the Lord at that time. Um, they will think that uh, Lucifer is Christ, because he'll proclaim that he is Christ. And he'll come back prosperously and peacefully 
And there won't be as much uproar in the earth at that time. So people's minds will be off the thought of the coming of the Lord. Verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, which is called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole earth, the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. God is very good at giving us information. He's given us the understanding here of three of the names here in verse 9 that Lucifer goes by. The first being the serpent, and then the devil, and then Satan. So he's making sure that the reader understands who it is that he's reading about. And he goes on to say, which deceiveth the whole earth, <clears throat> he was cast out on the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, in 1 Corinthians eleven ten. We see here in 1 Corinthians 11 and 10 that there is scripture given for that of the females. It says, for this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. These angelics, when they come, they're going to come and they're going to be more or less performing the same trickery, the same way that they came in Genesis chapter 6. When they came, they came and mated with women. That's all they had on their mind was distorting the bloodline. And when they come, again, that's exactly what they all have on their mind. But it says here in 1 Corinthians 11 and 10, For this calls off the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. And he's not talking about a, a garment of any sort, a hat of all that. Uh, he's talking about Christ. Long as you have Christ in your life, and as long as Christ is over you, uh, you are protected from these angelics. This goes for man or woman. Back in 12, Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, <clears throat> And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil and the Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out in the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. <clears throat> these are those that... Uh, in Revelations 11 and 13, that we read that it says, In the same hour was there a great earthquake, and tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were afraid and gave glory to God of heaven. Now this seven thousand is these angelics that we're speaking of here. Verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And that's his motivation. That's his way of getting his voice out, his opinion, is to persecute and to accuse God's children all the time. We're all going to make mistakes. We all fall short of God's glory, but we have a true repentance through Christ Jesus. As long as we come repented, all things are forgiven. All things are forgiven that we have done, and we move on. But Lucifer likes to, like man, he likes to bring up your past. Although God doesn't recall that, because when God forgives you of your sin, and you have repented, it goes into a sea of forgetfulness. 
Therefore, God does not want to be reminded of these things again. Verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. This verse 11, he says, and they overcame, they who? Matthew chapter 25, the wise virgins, those who had plenty of oil in their vessel, those that, in Revelation chapter 10, those that ingested the entire word of God, they ate it, and it became honey in their mouth and bitter in their stomach. And we explained that last time, that Oh, yes, it is. It's wonderful when you receive God's word and you get truths and, oh, it's just like the sweetness of honey. But when you try to turn around and give it out and try to explain it to others, it sometimes turns bitter because they will not receive it. it says again in verse 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb by the blood of Jesus Christ. In other words, they claim the blood in all that they've done. When you and I pray, we pray unto the Father with credentials in Jesus' name. We do not take lightly this shed blood that Christ shed for you and I, for it is the reason why we are Christians. That's why we are a Christ man, a Christ woman. It's because we believe that the blood that Christ shed on Calvary, it covers all of our sins. A-L-L. -L. And it says here, and by the word of their testimony. What was their testimony? Well, I've got a suggestion here. If you look in 1 John chapter number two, in the epistle of John, chapter number two, in verse 15. <clears throat> and it reads, this is the testimony that a Christ man or a Christ woman should have in this last day. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We're not to place things of this world over the love of our Father. We're not to place any type of monetary value over the love of our Father. Hosea 6.6 6 teaches us that we are to love God. He said, I want your mercies. In other words, your love. And for you to have knowledge and understanding of him. 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father, but is of the world. And we see that. And this should be your testimony. 17, and the world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. This is the testimony of God's children, that we continue on and do God's work, that we do not entangle ourselves with the affairs of this world. We do not entangle ourselves and involve ourselves in the usury of this world and uh, other things that will bind a Christian down. So he says here, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. This the death is depicting that of Satan. In Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14, it explains exactly what Christ done. He came and he donned the, the flesh body of a man, blood just like you and I, but he conquered death, that which is Satan. Verse 12, therefore rejoice, ye heavens, uh, and ye that dwell in them. In other words, be happy that you understand. Be happy and 
thankful to God that you have ingested this word of God and that you have went to Jeremiah and, uh, excuse me, into Zechariah chapter 10 and you have asked God. Now, this wisdom will not come unless you ask. You must ask Father for the wisdom. And as we have read in James chapter 1 and verse 5, uh, any man who lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Friends, we must ask God. Now, I'm not saying that you plead with him. Father knows your desires and he knows your, your heart. He said he would give you the desires of your heart. Now, the desires of your heart should not be uh, that you have, uh, you know, monetary value, things of the world. It, no, but that we gain wisdom, that we gain understanding from his word. Friend, that is the greatest thing this world has ever known is God's word. It cleanses us and keeps us and protects us through all of the things that are coming our way. God's doing all that he can right now to seal in the minds of the people how these things will transpire. And he wants you to be knowledgeable of it. To do that, we must ask for wisdom. <clears throat> Twelve again. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. This does not have to be one of God's election. This is not speaking of those who have the seal of God in their forehead. This is speaking of those who do not have the seal of God in their forehead. Those that were spoken of in Revelations 9 and 5, who that the horde of angels, when they come, that they are to hurt uh, only those. In other words, they are to only punish those who have not the seal of God in their forehead. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth uh, that he hath but a short time. He knoweth? Does he know it? Do you think he knows it? Why, sure he knows. He knows Mark 13 and 20. What's Mark 13 and 20 say? That the time has been shortened for the very elect's sake. Now, when Daniel's prophecy was given, oh, he was joyful at the time because he thought that he had a full seven years. And, of course, it had been changed to three and a half years. And through Christ's prophecy... And through Christ's work, he said, the time has been shortened to a five-month period. And we get that through Revelations 9 and 5, again, uh, when the horde of angels are here. And that's the length of time that they have. Verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast out into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Verse 14. And to the woman, Mother Israel, were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and a half time from the face of the serpent. Now, in Deuteronomy 32, we have this understanding what God is going to do for you and I. Deuteronomy 32 and verse number 11. And it reads, As an eagle stirreth up her nests, flourisheth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. And so will God. God will bear you on his wings if that's what it's needed. Some of God's children are stronger than others, meaning that they have been studying for a great length of time. And then there are some that are not as equipped. And so God will make protection for those that are not fully equipped, but yet are striving to follow the work of the Lord. So, we see here in 
14 again. Uh, and the woman, and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. We read that in Deuteronomy 32 and 11. That she might fly into the wilderness. Now, I want to take a moment and explain this word wilderness. In the Greek, it's 2048. And it means a desolate place. But when you transfer that into the Hebrew, it's 4057. And this word wilderness in the Hebrew is midbar. This is not necessarily a place, but a time. And it not only speaks that of a time, but it talks about this word meaning that it is part of the organs uh, that causes speech, meaning that God will speak to you and I in that day. He will tell us exactly what we have need, what we are needing to do, and where we are to be, and what we're supposed to be saying at that time. So it says that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, this place that is placed out by God, uh, where she is nourished for a time and times and a half time from the face of the serpent. Verse 15. And the serpent, now, we want to be sure that you understand that when it's speaking here of the serpent, it's going back all the way to the garden. In Genesis 3 and 1, it tells us there, in Genesis 3 and 1, the very first verse in chapter 3, in the book of Genesis, it says, Now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field uh, which the Lord God had made. And so we have here this serpent that is in the garden. And this word subtile, uh, it means uh, cunning, uh, uh, usually in a bad sense, what it means. So this is who we're talking about. wanted you to have an understanding who it is. And again, in verse 15, and the serpent, this subtile creature, the one that was uh, more cunning than any other one, meaning that he's going to be just as cunning in this day, that uh, when he comes, he's going to do all that he can to turn the minds of the people toward him. And the serpent cast out of his mouth, <clears throat> water as a flood after the woman. Now, in Revelations chapter 9 and verse 18, this is exactly how he's going to do this. In Revelations 9 and 18, it says, By these three was the third part of the men killed, by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouth. Meaning what? Meaning that it was lies, lies, lies. Regardless if it's black-faced lies, regardless if it's smoothed over or smoked over, or, or if it comes down on you like hailstone, it still lies. So it says, And the serpent cast out of his mouth water uh, as a flood after the woman but he couldn't do anything with her because she's sealed. You are sealed with the knowledge of truth. You are sealed with the understanding of knowing how these things will transpire. Knowing that you are to do what? Wait for the true Christ. There are two Christs coming. The first one is a liar. The first one is the Antichrist. The instead of. The second one that comes, the one that you are supposed to be waiting for, the one that the virgins wait for, this will be the true Christ. These will be those that are taken and delivered to the marriage supper. 
Again in 15, and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he may cause her to be carried away of the flood. To be carried away of the lies. And if you look also again in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 13. It says here in verse 13, And the Lord said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. This word beguiled is deceived. She was deceived because she did not know. You know. You understand, and you are prepared Therefore, you will not find him tempting. You will not find him one that is capable of uh, changing your heart and your mind. Uh, some people can be bought very easily. Some people can be bought with, uh, you know, new boat, new home, or uh, money in their account, or bills to be paid. Friends, believe you me, you do not want to take any part that the Antichrist has to offer. And he will offer. He will offer. He'll put it in your hand and, and, and do everything that he can to try to make you take it. Verse 16. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. The natural things of this world will absorb all of the lies that Satan has. In other words, God will bring it out and show you just how cunning that he is. God will reveal it to you and I. He will bring it out just as natural as the day is and just as natural as the leaves are on the tree or the birds in the air. We also will understand that, hey, what he has said is nothing more than a lie. And let's never forget, never forget this, that God is in control. It is God that is orchestrating all of these. So therefore, if you are on the side of God, and the Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? If we are on the side of God, if we are following the directions of God, then therefore we are right there where we need to be, tucked in, in safety and protection by God himself. Verse 17, to come to a close. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And that's quite all right. Let him come on. Let him bring his war. Let him bring his, uh, his punishment, per se. He has but a little time. You and I can endure it. You are a can-do kind of person. You can handle all things that he throws at you. Why is that? Because Ephesians chapter 6 teaches us that we are to don the whole armor of God. And if we have on that full armor of God, friend, there is nothing that will harm you and I. God will protect us through it all. God is so good to you and I. He's so good to give us understanding. Not only just the understanding, but he writes it in his word so that we can Follow along every day. God's love and his mercy is still abroad today. There is Revelation chapter number 12. And uh, we thank you again for tuning in with us this morning. Uh, we'll be in Revelation chapter 13 in our next uh, Bible study. Until the next time, may the Lord richly bless.